OK. Um, the, first, I want Elza, Sanjik's wife, to play the uh, Kalmek Dombra uh, because she was a musical student in college. And uh, anyway, she leads the music at her church. And I think you guys would like to hear that. Elza, Iditi Suda, Yavazmu. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, say a couple words about Sanjik, where he's from, and uh, maybe even say a little bit about Buddhism. Um, uh, Jordan is right, he is a Mongol, they are Mongols, but uh, it's a branch of Mongolians called the Kalmecs. The Kalmecs, they came from Inner Mongolia, uh, part of China now, and they came all the way across Central Asian steppes across the Volga River into southern Russia, just north of the Caucasus Mountains, and settled in this uh, semi-arid steppe or semi-arid prairie. And that's where they've, they've lived the last 400 years. Um, uh, in, let's see, right in the middle of the Second World War, uh, Stalin, he had kind of an ax to grind with the Kalmyk people and other uh, ethnic groups uh, in southern Russia. But he had them deported to uh, Central Asia, Siberia, and all the way out to the Sakhalin Islands, which are just north of Japan. So anyway, he had every member of, of uh, Sanjik's ethnic group, every Kalmyk, even the ones that were fighting in the war on the front, had them pulled off the front, deported them all, and he especially wanted to get rid of their culture completely. So he didn't just put them all in one big group. He dropped them off along the way, you know, like, like a salt shaker, all, all across Central Asia, all across Siberia, all the way to the Sakhalin Islands. They were scattered. And in 1957, when they were allowed to return back to their homeland by uh, Khrushchev, um, only half of their population was still alive. So that was really hard on, the, on, that, on that whole people group. Um, I, uh, I want to tell a little bit about how we met. I uh, was uh, getting ready to move to Russia in 1991. Um, my friend in Tulsa said, hey, uh, if you're going to Russia, you got to go to the Kalmyk people. Uh, the Kalmyks love wrestling. I was a wrestler for Oklahoma State, so uh, you got to go to the Kalmyk people. They love wrestling. Um, it's an ethnic group where wrestling is the most important sport. And uh, I think that's a one way to bring the gospel to them because at that time, at the breakup of the Soviet Union, there were less than a handful of known uh, Kalmyk believers. So it was almost a completely unreached people group. Anyway, um, in 1992, I took my f first trip down there. Um, I went to a club called Club Boomba, and it was where the national Kalmyk wrestlers wrestled. And we showed some American moves, me and this other guy. And then um, uh, this whole line formed. You know, the coach said, well, does anybody want to wrestle me? You know, so 
I got to wrestle everybody. In fact, that's, that's where uh, Sanjik, Sanjik and I met on the mat. I, he was one of the guys that I wrestled against. And then at the very end, they saved the best match for last. Uh, I had to res wrestle a refereed match, a timed refereed match with their heavyweight, who was like this tall and had been in international tournaments as a heavyweight. So anyway, after that was over, we had a chance to talk to him, um, tell our stories about how you know we came to, to Jesus and um, uh, gave a gospel presentation. And after it was all over, uh, we handed out some books and stuff. Anyway, uh, Sanjik told me five years, five years later, uh, I heard from a mutual friend, I said, he said, you got to go to Kalmekia. The best wrestler in Kalmekia is now a Christian and he's on fire. And that's, uh, that's when uh, Sanjik and I met the second time. So anyway, I'm going to let him tell his story. But before I do, um, he comes from uh, Kalmekia are Tibetan Buddhists. And I became acquainted with Tibetan Buddhism down there in Kalmekia. Uh, he took me on several occasions to the head lama. Uh, in the town where he grew up and, and we got a chance to sit down and really talk in depth about Buddhism and I told him about what you know Christianity was anyway um, And then of course when I moved to Mongolia there, you know Mongols too, so uh, they're also um, Tibetan Buddhists and I learned a lot about Tibetan Buddhism and let me read you something I knew this guy briefly, but he was a missionary in Mongolia. His name is Brian Hogan. He writes a book, There's a Sheep in My Bathtub. Anyway, it's a good book. But I love the way he writes this because this is what I've, I've seen so many times and thought so many times, but he writes it a whole lot better than I would have. Anyway, he's, he's visiting the Ganden Monastery, which is the central Buddhist uh, temple in the capital of Mongolia, Ulan Ude, uh, Ulan Bator, sorry. He said, inside the temple, it gives one quite a different picture of Buddhism that, than Richard Gere's interpretation. The room is filled with idols. Buddha seems to be a minor player. The pride of the place goes to Yama, the god of death and hell. Images of Yama differ, but certain themes prevail. He's depicted with fangs and a terrifying expression of fierce, leering malevolence. He wears a necklace of severed human heads a cloak of filleted skin, and is often showed consuming a skull cup of blood. Then it talks about his girlfriend and some of the other images. Uh, one element that's always present is the bodies of men, women, and even Buddhist lamas being crushed under the God's feet. Yama is clearly the star and Tibetan Buddhist, of Tibetan Buddhist worship, and torture and terror are the main events. So anyway, uh, I was always shocked at the imagery when I, when I went into a Buddhist temple and who they actually pray to. You know, if you took anybody there that didn't know anything, you'd say, now who are these characters? And they, anybody would say, well, these are demons. I remember I went to a buddy of mine's house and I knew some of the Tibetan gods. Uh, one of them was Jamsran. He was red, had warts, and he was also often stomping on people. But there was this, this one that was a bull with horns and fangs. And I always wondered which, which one this one was. And I was at this buddy of mine's house and in every Buddhist house, you've got this little shrine and, and a picture here to your God. And you burn incense and leave candy and stuff and pray. So I said to my buddy, I said, you know, I've always wondered what, what the name of this particular Buddhist God is. And um, I, so I said, what, what, what's his name? And he goes, hmm, I don't know. And he, he says to his wife, hey, what, what's the name of our God? And she, and that's the way he put it. He said, what's the name of our God? And uh, she thinks for a minute, she goes, hmm, I, I don't, I'm not sure. And um, anyway, that's very strange to us. And when you think about our concept of who God is, it is so different than, than Tibetan Buddhists. You know, we, we look at God as someone who loves us, who calls himself uh, our father, who calls us his children. You know, somebody that wants to have a relationship with us, wants to know us, you know, wants us, uh, wants to forgive our sins. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm going to have uh, Sanjik uh, tell how he came to the Lord and uh, some of the things he's done uh, being a missionary to his own people. Well, first of all, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy to be here and I can share with you 
своим свидетельством, как Бог в моей жизни действовал. So anyway, I'd like to greet all of you guys, and it's uh, a privilege and honor to be here and be able to tell my story about how I came to the Lord. Я приехал из Калмыки, вот наш национальный флаг калмыцкий. Uh, I came from Kalmykia. This is our national flag. И вы видите на флаге изображено лотос. You can see on the flag the lotus. Я всегда говорю это символ Иисуса Христа. I say this is the symbol of Jesus. Почему? Потому что именно на лотос растет в болотах грязь. Okay, so a a, 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 lo, a lotus, as you know, grows in a swampy area. И болото символизирует наш грешный мир. And this um, uh, swamp is kind of representative of our sinful world that we live in. Именно белый лотос среди грешного мира. And if you, if you can imagine a white flower, a beautiful white flower that stays uh, pure and unstained in, in a swamp. So I like to think of the lotus, the, the lotus symbolizing Jesus, un, unstained by the world. Хорошо, я республика Калмыкия это единственная республика на территории Европы, которая исповедует буддизм. Uh, Kalmykia is actually in the geographical uh, confines of Europe, so it's the only European group of people, only European nation that uh, confesses Buddhism. Uh, I've come here Elza. with uh, my wife Elsa. We've got two kids, uh, a daughter, she's uh, 22, Zanda. She's actually studying at a Bible college right now in um, Sweden. My son is Arslan, which means uh, lion, by the way, in uh, Mongolian language. He's 16 and he's studying now in the city of Vladikavkaz at a, uh, at a wrestling school. I was raised in a Buddhism I was raised in a traditional Buddhist family. Uh, and uh, that was, of course, during the time of the Soviet Union. Uh, all religion was uh, forbidden at that time. It wasn't just Christians that were, that were uh, persecuted during the Soviet era. So my family would do all the Buddhist rituals secretly in our house. И мой отец был шаман. My, uh, my dad was a shaman. Когда у кого-то у людей происходил, кто-то заболел или что-то пропал, украл или нужно открыть дорогу, они приходили к нему. So uh, people from our town would come to my dad. Uh, he, they'd come to him for healing if they were sick. They'd come to him if they lost something. He could use his magical powers to divine where it was. Or if a cow was missing, if a person uh, had a problem, they would come to the shaman of the village. In our culture, as you can imagine, there was a lot of superstition. Here's, here's examples of um, uh, some of the superstitions. If you have a baby, uh, you can't show it to anybody for at least two months. In other words, you keep it in seclusion and in hiding for two months. So, anyway, there's different reasons. Uh, one is, um, if a person happens to compliment this baby, uh, it, it's actually, a compliment is actually a curse. You know, if the, the nefarious spirits are looking on and you lavish too much attention on a baby, uh, it makes that baby attractive to take his, his spirit, you know, for the, 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 the evil spirits to take the spirit of the baby. In other words, kill him. Человек, который в обществе успешен, обычно к нему у него есть много друзей, которые приносят ему подарки, и он боится эти все подарки принять, и он обычно собирает и выкидывает, потому что он думает, что в этих подарках есть заговоренный, который повредит его успех. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, if, if uh, a lot of people come with presents, sometimes the, uh, the mom and the dad, they even throw the presents away because it's possible to uh, bring a curse into the house through a present. So if, if I, I could send a curse into your house in the form of a present. И можно много, много говорить таких, и самое главное в этом So he could spend a lot of time страх. listing all the different uh, superstitions, but let's just put it this way, it, it causes us to fear all the time. И я видел с самого детства, как моя семья поклонялась, и это было красиво, конечно, я мечтал тоже, когда вырасту, буду вести такие же обряды. So when I watched uh, my grandmother especially uh, do the Buddhist um, uh, the ceremonies, the rituals. Uh, I was attracted to that. I thought, oh, what beautiful rituals. And uh, I, I knew that that's what I would do when I grew up. No, при этом я всегда слышал, что Бога нет. But at the same Советского. time now, I'm going to school, and it's a Soviet school, so officially during the Soviet era, um, we were atheists, and that's what we were taught in school. There is no God. We came from monkeys. Я хотел утвердить своим вопросе есть бог есть ли после смерти жизнь и заранее задавал бабушка вопрос и заранее думал что она скажет да I had questions when I was a kid I wondered you know is there a god and is there life after death well I knew you know my grandma she was the most religious person I knew so I I I was sure that she had the answers to those questions and that she could uh, confirm that yes there is a god yes there is life after death но она сказала не знаю. But her answer to my questions was, I don't know. И я был в недоумении, но жизнь продолжался. And that was confusing to me. Ходил в школу, занимался борьбой. Um, I kept going to school, I got into wrestling. И я всегда над этим думал, над вопросом, есть ли Бог или нет. But, but I was still concerned with the question, you know, who is God? И когда нам в школе нас учили, что Бога нет, то я всегда смотрел на предметы, вот чашки, ложки, то те же ручки. Я всегда думал, ну их кто-то создал, люди. When we were told there is no God, uh, they, they actually had a course um, in the Soviet school system, uh, научный атеизм, uh, scientific atheism. So they, they proved to you that there was no God. But it, it seemed contradictory to logic to say that. Because when I looked at things um, uh, that had been made by people, I, I knew they didn't come there by accident. Somebody made them. And, and I'm so much more complicated than these objects that I'm looking at. So some, somebody had to make them. Somebody had to make me. And when the Soviet Union was Пришло свободы много, и можно было очень много, это выбор был религии очень много. So, uh, the Soviet Union fell apart, we became free, and with that freedom, a lot of different ideas started flooding into our country. И я, конечно, начал познавать буддизм. And I wanted to look into Buddhism, uh, Buddhism now that it was coming out in the open. И я видел, что очень много молодежи уезжали в Индию учиться. Uh, a lot of young Kalmecs uh, were sent to northern India to study Buddhism at the, the lamasery there where the uh, Dalai Lama is. Очень сильно было популярно. So that was really popular. They, they wanted to revive Buddhism in Kalmecia. Ну, проходило где-то месяц, наверное, два, когда 95% возвращались назад. You know, after a relatively short amount of time, I noticed 95% of these guys came back. И они не жили в этой жизни, вот это буддизм, они возвращались, жили в светской жизни. And so when they came back, they weren't Buddhists anymore. They didn't live the Buddhist life. They didn't become monks. They didn't go on with Buddhism. They just became regular people. И я, и когда мне приглашали тоже ехать учиться в Индии, я говорил сначала я хочу познать, потому что я думал, боялся, что когда я поеду, разочаруюсь и вернусь, потрачу зря so время. So when I was asked to um, my, my lama uh, from my town, um, wanted me to go study at the Lamasari in Tibet, or not in Tibet, but northern India. Um, I said, no, I want to really look into it really carefully first, uh, before I make a decision like that. And when I read about Buddhism, I didn't find an 
в буддизме. И э, буддизм это философия о том, что Бога нет, и каждый человек может стать Богом. So I couldn't find the answers to my questions in Buddhism. Buddhism is actually a philosophy. Uh, Buddha was a philosopher. И, конечно, я начал продолжать э, поиски истины. И соседи у нас очень много республик, которые мусульманские. Мы, конечно, сопротивлялись с ними. Я очень много общался с, с, с исламистами. Buddha himself uh, was an agnostic. He, if there is a God, he didn't. He said he didn't know him. So uh, I started looking at um, uh, some of the uh, neighboring republics. Uh, uh, Kalmykia borders with Chechnya and Dagestan. Those are two uh, Muslim republics. So he looked in, and he had lots of wrestling friends from there. So he looked into Islam. Um, he looked into other religions too, by the way. Um, uh, the Moonies were there, and, and uh, he became part of the Moonies for a while. Других э, будут э, в маленьких сектах. And then there were other smaller ones. И вот к нам приехали одно время спортсмены, атлеты в действии. So, с, uh, с at, at one time, uh, these guys, uh, Christian uh, wrestlers came uh, that were with athletes in action. И нам раздавали брошюрки, где описывалось об Иисусе Христе, о верующих спортсменах. So, uh, included in their program, they gave out some brochures that talked about uh, athletes that had become Christians who were giving their testimonies. И я узнал, что люди грешные, все грешные. And from that, I learned that uh, people were sinners. Everybody was uh, sinful. В буддизме, когда я ходил, или в других, даже мунизм, мне всегда говорили о том, что я на ступень выше, чем другие. Моя карма лучше. When I went to the uh, my local uh, temple, the the lama always said, "Oh, you've got good karma. You're you're a good boy. You know, you're you're much higher than the others." Even the Moonies told me the same thing. И в Библии священное Писание описывает, что все мы грешны, нет ни одного праведника. So, uh, but the Bible says, "For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God." И для меня это, конечно, было некомфортно. Я привык получать комплименты, то что я не такой плохой, как. So that was kind of hard here. I was used to uh, getting compliments about how good I was, uh, and now this thing says I'm in the same boat as everybody else. I'm a sinner. И, но в долгое раздумье я согласился. Действительно, я такой же грешник, как и все. But when I really thought about it, I meditated on it. I I agreed with it. I am a sinner. I'm I'm no different different than anybody else. I, I've done bad things. И Христос умер за грехи. And за I also личные. read that Jesus had died for my sins, not just the sins of the world, but my sins personally. И когда я принял Христа в свое сердце, в моей жизни очень много произошло. Um, when I asked Jesus to come into my life, a lot of things started to change. Тогда мне было 22. Года. I was 22 at the time. И во-первых, я понял, что есть Бог. Я знаю, что что ждет мне после смерти. Um, I finally got those questions from my childhood answered. Yes, there is a God, and I knew uh, what was going to happen to me when I died. Я знаю, что после uh, он освободил от суеверия, от страха всякого. So uh, God also set me free from all those superstitions that I've been raised, the, 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 all the cultural superstitions. И Иоанна, 8 глава, 32 стих, Иисус сказал, познайте истину, и истина сделает вас свободным. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. И, конечно, когда я принял Христа в свое сердце, у меня очень много друзья отвернулись. Не хотели со мной общаться. So um, when I became a Christian, I went back to my hometown. His hometown is Taganaman. It's right on the uh, the banks of the Volga River. There's 10,000 people in this village. Sanjik was the first guy to become a Christian in this town. He came back, and his friends rejected him. His friends didn't want to be associated with him. Uh, мои родственники, отец были недовольными. Uh, all my relatives were, um, uh, they were all mad at me, and especially my dad. My dad yelled and said, you've brought shame to our family. 
И, конечно, морально было очень трудно. Um, it was really hard for me, you know, uh, my, my spirit to, to endure this. И я очень долго, много молился о том, что, что мне да, делать дальше. Um, and I, at that time, I prayed a lot, what, you know, God, what do you want me to do? Я видел, uh, как наш народ гибнет без Христа. I, I had a vision that my, my people were perishing without God. Uh, мне была картина, как народ идет, и они падают в пропасть. И я понял, что именно Христос поможет моему народу. И я начал молиться о том, что как я могу больше познавать Христа, больше узнавать Библию. So I, I wanted to know more about God, more about the Bible. И вот приехали также обратно атлеты в действие, спортсмены. Стив меня пригласил в библейский колледж учиться. So uh, one time when I came back and, and, and we met a second time, I, um, I invited Sanjik to study at the Bible College that we have there in Moscow. And it was a two-year course. В течение двух лет я научился, первых, благовествовать, как делиться с Евангелием. Как вести ученичество. Uh, to, um, people, как открывать церковь. Um, И когда мне говорили о том, что пастор говорил, что Санджик, ты настолько посвящен, что ты готов поехать в Африку миссионером. One of the pastors, uh, who is a teacher at the Bible College, he saw something in me. He said, "Oh, Sanjik, you're so uh, committed. I think you'd go to Africa if, so, if you were called to go there." Я смотрел на него и говорю, про себя думал, мне легче поехать в Африку, чем к себе домой. But I was thinking inside, it would be a whole lot easier to go to Africa than to go back home. Because he knew what was waiting for him there. И я именно когда закончил колледж, мне было такое большое рвение ехать домой и делиться с людьми Евангелия. When when I uh, got done with Bible college, I knew that's where God was sending me back to where I was from. I had this huge desire to go back and talk to my people, my uh, relatives. И когда я приехал, конечно, очень много было сопротивление с моих друзей и родственников. There was there were just these huge um, oh, barriers, roadblocks uh, from from my friends, from my family when I went back home. Родственники были недовольны, что я приехал. Uh, my uh, relatives didn't want me to come back. They they wanted me to stay in Moscow. Uh, друзья практически не хотели со мной общаться. Uh, my friends Uh, they were ashamed to be associated with me. They wouldn't talk to me either. Но Бог приготовил других людей, которые хотят слышать Евангелие. But God had prepared people whose hearts were open to hearing the gospel. Я почему именно домой приехал? Потому что самого детства они видели мою, как я рос, учился и мою жизнь. Я именно хотел приехать и показать им. Другую жизнь во Христе. So these were people who saw me grow up. I, I grew up in that town. They they uh, they knew me really well, and I wanted uh, to share the gospel with them. И в течение года многие уверовали, крестились. At the end of that first year, um, uh, we baptized 30 people in the Volga River. И ну я много молился. I prayed a long time about my my family, my close family members. Когда я с отцом хотел заговорить о Боге, всегда заканчивался скандалом. So anytime I was with my dad, I brought up the uh, brought up the topic about God. He started arguing immediately. И прошло где-то 10 лет примерно. Когда отец пришел домой ко мне, мы Сели, общались много, и я осторожно хотел поговорить с ним о Боге и продолжил 
So uh, one day, and this is like 10 years after I'd become a Christian, my dad comes to my house and uh, he's sitting at the table and uh, I very cautiously uh, ask him the question, you know, can I, can I explain about God to you? And when he said, yeah, I, I want to hear, uh, it was really surprising to me. I uh, explained the gospel to him, talked to him about Jesus. And at the end, I said, do you want to ask Jesus into your life, into your heart? And he said, yes. И он, когда принял Христа в свое сердце, я постоянно ему напоминал, э, кто он, и, и говорил о том, что после смерти мы обязательно встретимся. So, after, you know, when he, when he prayed uh, with me, uh, it brought incredible joy into my life. It was a, it was a miracle. Um, he was actually uh, 80 at the time, and he lived for another six years and, and read his Bible. И... Uh, so anyway, as, as he got old, you know, nearing death, I always talked to him about the fact that we're going to meet each other again. We're going to see, see each other again in heaven. But three years ago, that's when he did die. Потребовалось вот практически 10 лет, когда мои родственники начали уважительно ко мне относиться. So, and it was about 10 years before uh, my uh, close relatives would even... Um, you know, he had a decent, a normal relationship with me. Мой брат уверовал. One of my brothers came to faith. Практически больше, наверное, половина моих племянников уверовали. And and probably half of my nieces and nephews have come to faith. И друзья, одноклассники уже начали часто ко мне домой приезжать. Many of my childhood friends have come to faith. A lot of them I have a real good relationship with now. Просто в трудные минуты я старался быть рядом своими друзьями. When they were having problems, uh, difficult times, I always tried to be next to them. И показывать любовь Христа. And I always wanted to show them the uh, the love of Jesus. И и данный момент я хочу сказать сейчас те друзья, которые отвернулись, они обратно вернулись. And, and those that uh, of my friends that rejected me, um, we have a great relationship now. And I'm able to witness to them also. Uh-huh. And, and two of those that I grew up with in my class have now become Christians. Uh, maybe you guys have a few questions. I, I want um, Elza to come up and say a few words too, before it's all over. Elza. I, this is a story I asked her to tell you guys. Um, a year ago, she um, she told us something about her childhood that we hadn't known previously. Um, because she was a Christian, because she was part of a Christian family in this, you know, uh, this town with only, you know, Kalmec, um uh, Buddhist, she was made in fun of by the other kids in the class. There were guys that beat her up. Um, one day, there, uh, you know, uh, they had the uh, pit toilets, you know, outside toilets uh, at the at their school, and so she was on the girls' side, and she saw the boys that beat her up uh, all the time, and they were waiting for her outside. Uh, waiting for her to come out of the pit toilet 
And anyway, she stayed there in the winter three hours till they left. Yeah, because she knew that what was waiting for her when she came out. Um, and, I, and I asked, why, why didn't you tell us about this uh, before? Yeah, but they uh, okay. she, she didn't want to be the kind of tattletale that always went home to the parents, you know, because she thought it would even be worse for her then. And, and uh, because of lack of respect for her being a tattletale, you know, it, it, it get even worse. And, um, she, she hadn't said it yet, but you know, even her teachers would publicly ridicule her in front of the other kids, and she always got a grade lower than what she should have gotten. Because she was a Christian, the, uh, the teachers um, would give her a lower grade. So anyway, when, when she was going through these difficult times, she would think about Jesus and that he went through hard times too. And uh, that one time when she was uh, waiting three hours in the, in the toilet, she started thinking about uh, all, all the things that Jesus suffered for us and it wasn't such a big deal for her. Oh, and, and uh, we knew that the teachers were lowering her grade because she was a Christian. And we came to talk to the teachers. And we tried to point out that that's against the law. And especially Sanjit was, was the one that interceded on her behalf. Uh, on her behalf. Um, and I think it got a little better after that with the teachers. And, and now uh, she came home at Christmas time uh, from the college, the, the Bible college she's at, and uh, she said that you know, through that suffering, um, she sought God's blessing even in that. Ah, okay. So um, she's she's really uh, interested in um, serving others, and even when she was home, she was bringing little kids into the into the house and showing them Superbook and other stuff. You know, and talking to little kids from the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And so, in, in, uh, and this is all during the Christmas break, uh, she even went to school and gave uh, her teachers uh, Christian uh, booklets. And uh, one of these teachers actually became a Christian uh, at our, uh, it's like a Christian, our Christmas special that the church has where you can bring unbelievers. So when she finishes uh, Bible college in the, you know, this spring, um, she wants to come and start working with us um, in the student ministry. The 16 year old son, he's in Vladikavkaz. And he's, he's, uh, he left home at 16. It was really tough to let him go to, to fly to Kafkas. But um, letting him go there, and now he's kind of taken on the, um, the Christian faith and, and made it his own. And he, he, there's been this huge in, um, spiritual growth there. He's very active in his local church there. 
он рассказывал в Евангелии чеченцам, это вот соседи, да, с Калмыкии, да, да. мусульманские страны, чеченцы, кабардино Балкарии. So at his sport boarding school, there are kids from all over the uh, Caucasus area. His roommates uh, are from Chechnya. I don't know if you know anything about Chechens, but they're the most radical of all the Muslims. So his, his roommates in Chechen and another one um, is, is from another Muslim uh, region down there, ethnic And so he's friends with them and he uh, likes to talk to them about Jesus. And sometimes at night he reads the Bible out loud. Uh, right before they're going to bed. <laughs> And they listen because, you know, they're already in bed. Where are they going to go? <laughs> And he invites all of his friends to come with him to church every week. And uh, if they say, no, I'm not going this week, he doesn't let him go that easy. He says, why? What's wrong? Maybe I can help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Сейчас 21 числа вот он уезжает на конференцию, молодежную конференцию. He's going to go to a, uh, it's a big uh, conference for uh, students um, all over Russia. It's going to be in Moscow, and he's going to go, and he's bringing one of his friends with him that he wants to be involved with him in the ministry there. И мы надеемся, что он также будет продолжать служение. So we hope when, when he gets older, he'll, he'll also join us and, and, and work with us. And we'd like to send him to the Bible College too, but he's at it. Нормально? Хватит. Okay, спасибо. Okay. Oh, uh, are there any questions for these guys? Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed or not, um, the suitcase, or Sanjik is, is pretty shy, you know what I mean? He, he would not be the guy that you typically choose to be a missionary. In fact, when I invited him to the Bible college, um, he wasn't nearly as talkative as he is now. Um, the Russian I was with, he says, you're crazy. Why are you inviting him to the Bible college? And I said, well, you know, I saw, I felt something in him, and I was a lot like that when I was his age. So anyway, um, it's really cool how God uses a guy that's that quiet. Um, he is the best. I rub shoulders with a lot of missionaries, okay, a lot of people in ministry. He's the best guy I've ever met with one-on-one -on -one evangelism. He's got one very simple presentation of, of the gospel that he uses, and it works. Presenting the gospel to another person actually works. Uh, I can't tell you how many people he's led to the Lord. Just one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell you one last story, and then, um, then we're done. Um, I was with a group from a church. We were down in Kalmekia, and uh, San, uh, Sanjik was with me. Oh, well, he wasn't just with me. He was the one leading it. He was the one organizing it. When, when he started a, um, a mission a church right there in his hometown, he had the vision to go to all the villages in that region. So he started a church there, got it on its feet, got it built up. He actually sent eight guys from that from that town to the Bible college that he had graduated from because he wanted them to do the same thing that he's doing. So um, anyway, uh, we were on one of these trips to these different villages. Oh, and by the way, there are churches in each one of those villages now. So uh, we, were, we were going to those villages, and we're in this one village, village and we had presents, the Samaritan Purse shoebox Christmas presents for the kids. So the, the moms and the kids uh, came to our meetings, but the guys didn't. You know, the men in the town, they just kind of loitered outside, you know, town hall. And so uh, anyway, one day I came out of the meeting, they're loitering, and I said, hey, uh, we want to play you guys in soccer. I already knew who was going to win. It wasn't going to be me and my team. <laughs> so anyway, we played these guys in soccer, and then uh, uh, Sanjay told them that I was a wrestler. Well, everybody, you know, every man wrestles if you're a cowman. So they literally formed a line right out there on the uh, soccer field, and I wrestled one after another. The last guy I wrestled, um, he wasn't just the best wrestler. He was the smartest wrestler. He waited until I was tired, he watched my moves, and then he came out to wrestle me. 
So anyway, after all that was over, um, I said, hey, we've got a meeting for you guys in the town hall. No women and children are even allowed. It's just for you guys. And so uh, they all came. Every one of them came. And, and we got a chance to talk to these guys, give our testimony, show a, a, a sport film about athletes that were Christians. Anyway, fast forward two years. When we go to the same town again, and uh, in the town hall, we've got a, we got a meeting for everybody. And uh, Sanjik, you know, he's, he's quiet. He's standing back, you know, and I'm, I'm talking and doing my thing. He's over here and he's watching everybody in the crowd. And after this thing is over, he, he knows exactly who to go to. He knows who's, he can tell who God's speaking to. And it happens to be the same guy that, uh, that was the best and the smartest wrestler from two years earlier. And so uh, he finds out that this guy wanted to be a Christian. And he, he was trying to clean up his life uh, uh, before he came to the Lord, you know. He was going to clean himself up and then come to the Lord. And he had failed miserably. And so uh, Sanjik explained to him uh, that he, God accepts us the way we are. He, he said, come to him first. He'll change. He'll give you the power, the... the uh, the possibility to change. He'll change you. And so anyway, with, with Sanjik, uh, this guy prayed to receive Christ. But anyway, I just love the way he operates. And, and to me, he's, a, um, oh, he's an example of, of how I, I, I would want to be, or how I do want to be, uh, in being bold and sharing my faith with others. So anyway, that's it. Um, is, is somebody going to close us? If not, I'd like to say a prayer. Okay, all right. Lord, um, I thank you for tonight. Thanks for bringing Sanjik and Elsa here, Lord. Thank you for their story. Thank you for how you've worked in their life and how you open the door um, for missionaries to come. Uh, you brought your word to the Kalmec people. Thank you how you use Sanjik and Elsa with their own people for the church that's going and for all the house churches and uh, all the things uh, the student ministry and for what you're doing in the lives of their kids Lord we give you all the praise and glory because you're the one uh, that comes into us and changes us and um, anyway I pray that you'll use that story Lord to inspire us to, to go out and do the same thing to be used of you to um, let your light shine through us and so that our lives will bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen.